Jimmy Rainey is one of those musicians who can take a C major 7 and then play a C blues phrase on top of that and the phrase is in 3-4 even though the song is in 4. Then he repeats this phrase and turns it into a 2-5-1 in the key of B flat major with a tritone dominant. And this is the thing that I want to talk about from his playing, one aspect that I think is really interesting about Jimmy Rainey's playing. Because in this video I'm going to look at how he's using repeated phrases and I'm going to show you some of the different ways because there are a lot of different effects that he can actually pull out of that. And it's a very strong concept and something that's very worthwhile for you to check out and incorporate into your own playing. My name is Jens Larsen. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and use that to make music, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This first line already contains two examples of how Jimmy Rainey is using repeated melodies within his solo playing. And I think that's already saying a lot because this is of course only a three bar example. So it's a fairly short amount of time where he's already using two different lines that he's repeating. Uh, the example that I'm using here is from his solo on Billy's Bounce, which is a blues and F. That's off the album The Master from uh, 1975, I think, at least sometime in the 70s. That's a quartet album with Kirk Leitze. And I'm using that solo and I'm also using some examples from the album Rainy 81, which is with his son. That's also a quartet album. I tend to prefer the later Jimmy Rainey albums, mostly because he's a little bit more interesting rhythmically, in my opinion there. But of course, uh, taste may vary, so you might like the earlier. His career is long enough. Anyway, so the first example here is on the final 2-5 in the F blues and we're coming in on the G minor bar and he's really just playing a four note melody and then repeating that. So he starts on the one end and then and then does just exactly the same again. Then run down, runs down the scale and then we get an approach. And then actually, so we have that first repetition, the scale one, and then after that we get the another repetition where he's playing sort of a three-quarter motif and then putting that on top of the 4-4. Four, four. So we get the this phrase, which is of course a three-quarter phrase and then another one. And that way he's sort of shifting the meter a little bit. He's not using it too much in this example, but you'll see later examples where he really uses this idea quite a lot and also to create some shifting patterns on top of the 4-4 four, four meter. The second example here is actually a lot longer than it has to be because sort of what I'm talking about as the main part of the video is of course the repeated phrases and the motifs and that's at the end of the line. But I included the first part as well uh, just because I really like what it sounds like and also because I think the fact that he's playing this really long uh, melody that's pretty much purely on the offbeat is something that's quite typical for him and also just illustrates how he uses rhythm in a, in a very nice way. And uh, the first part of it is really just this really very basic blues phrase on the F7, so... Um, and then we get this whole long just scale melody on the offbeats. So there's nothing too interesting in the melody itself ex except for the fact that it's all offbeats and that creates some tension. So he's really using rhythmic tension here. Then he moves into an um, eighth note line on the in bar four, which uh, I'm not sure if actually they play, I didn't check if they play B7, but uh, it's an F7 also, or he's maybe thinking, he's probably thinking B7 here. And the line is coming out of two triad uh, melodies. So first an A major, and then C sharp minor. And this of course neatly resolves down to a G on the B flat seven. And then here he is playing first the G, so the 13, and then moving up to the root. And then this is encircling the A flat. And from the A flat, he plays exactly the same melody, but now it's just a half step lower. But the fact that the, he first adds this encircling of the A flat means that the whole line is shifted uh, one quarter note. And that's kind of what makes it work and what makes it interesting. Because we have this fairly long, dense eighth note line melody that has sort of one interesting thing happening with the triad melody in the top with it. So that kind of sticks out 
and then he's using that, so he's repeating that idea, and we can hear it comes back, but he's not putting it in the exactly same uh, spot rhythmically, and that makes it interesting, because if you if you just had some sort of melody and then played first a B, B7 line, like, and then just repeat that on the B flat 7, that's way too predictable, and that gets boring really quickly. But here it's, it's, a, it's a lot more vague also, it's not so clear as what I was just playing, but it's also just shifted and it behaves in a different way than what we expect and that makes it interesting, that makes it work really well. This example is from the Rainy 81 album. This is the beginning, the opening of his solo on what is this thing called love, which is difficult to say for Danish people. And um, I've included the pickup also because I think he kind of sets up the melodic idea that he then keeps on using and actually uses to create the first eight bars of the solo. So we get the pickup as being just really C major, all of it, so. And then we get this rhythm that's So the idea is that he's really using the dotted quarter note and the eighth note. And then... Once he's on the G after minus, we get this chromatic encircling of the root. The same on the F minor. And then also on the... And I think he's really just sort of thinking the bass line here. So he's sticking with the G. And then we get... He's skipping the C, plays the F. And then he's actually also thinking of F minor with E flat in the bass down to D half diminished. But now he's beginning to move the harmony around. So here he's playing across the bar line and we get on the third beat the... So he's coming out on the E flat, which I think he's just thinking as sort of a bass note. But he's actually coming out on top of the D half diminished. And then we get the D in the middle of that bar. And then from here he goes into a G7 line that he actually pulls in to halfway through the C major line and then resolves to the third beat. So what we have here is he's really setting up the rhythm in the first part of it, turning into sort of a small motif of enclosures and then just playing those through and also shifting them through the, the rest of the A part and finally just turning it into sort of a bebop line with an alter dominant and resolving that back to the C major. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these interesting jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, then I can also give you something in return for your support. This phrase is a little bit later in the solo. This is in the second chorus and here he is improvising over the ending of an A part, so the D half to to G7 to C. He's not really spelling out the changes. Uh, he's going for what I would consider more of a blues sound. It's open to interpretation. You can also consider it sort of just C minor on top of a minor 2-5, even though it's a minor 2-5 that resolves to a major chord. To me, it sounds like blues. If you don't agree with me, leave a comment. I'm, of course, curious what you think. What he's playing here, so he starts with just sliding up to the E flat, so really just the minor third. And then he does that one more time on the D half diminished. And then he adds the C and he does this to just create a three note grouping. So three eight notes that he can repeat and in that way just have something that shifts on top of the of the meter. This is something that he does quite a lot. There's a little bit later in the solo, he's also just playing dotted quarter notes for a few bars. So that idea and that kind of grouping and that kind of rhythm is something that he's using quite a lot actually. Uh, so here he's just repeating that. So. And then the final time, instead of sliding from D up to E flat, he slides up from E flat up to E and then ends the line on a G. And that's really just a way of taking the blues phrase and then sort of resolving it back into the C major. So he's a little bit using the blues phrase as a sort of dissonance or a tension on top of the 2-5 and then just resolving back into the, the C major 7.
I think this is really quite a brilliant phrase because here we have Jimmy Rainey playing something that begins as just a C blues phrase on a C major seven. And then he starts using that also on a C minor seven and he starts shifting it. And in that way, it kind of becomes this cross rhythmic figure of uh, three quarter notes that is shifting and going from being a C major or a C blues phrase to being a part of a two five one in the key of B flat with a tritone substitution. So the phrase is six eighth note long. This phrase, and it is of course just like a C power chord with a leading note, which is the blue note. So that's what gives it the idea that gives us the idea that it's a blues phrase. And then he just repeats that. He starts on the C major seven, and then he plays that a few times. And then we get to the uh, C minor. He can just play it again. So moving down to essentially a B seven. I think they're playing F seven, but it is essentially a B seven. Just the same phrase, a half step down. And then resolving that to B flat by just playing the same phrase a half step lower. And then he repeats it there as well. Another guitar player who has a really strong sense of melody and also some really interesting rhythms is Jim Hall. If you want to check out some videos that I did analyzing some of his solos, then check out one of these videos. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.